Humans and their ancestors have been making stone tools for at least two and a half million years. Ever since they struck two rocks together and created the world's first artifacts, which initiated what we call the Stone Age. Now, in the beginning of the 21st century, this remarkable chapter in our cultural evolution might be coming to an end. There may be only one place left on Earth where people still practice on a daily basis the specialized art of flaking tools from stone. In the southern highlands of Ethiopia, there are still a few ethnic groups who make flaked stone tools to scrape cattle, goat and sheep hides for bedding, clothing and bags. However, there is only one group left in which women, rather than men, are the primary producers and users of stone tools. This group is called the Konso. The Konsol live in southwestern Ethiopia. They are one of the ten or so eastern Cushitic speaking ethnic groups in the area. The Konsol population of over 160,000 people is spread throughout approximately 100 villages. About 40 of these villages are nucleated. They are walled and have a village center. Roughly 1,500 people live in each village. They are subsistence farmers known for their construction of extensive stone terraces on the hills surrounding their villages. Their staple diet is sorghum. They also raise livestock and grow various other crops including corn, beans, cotton and bananas. Local, regional and foreign goods are bought and sold at the local console markets. The Konso divide themselves into two socio-political economic classes, the Indata or farmers and the Hauta who are artisans including weavers, ironsmiths, butchers, potters and hide workers. Of the 112 console hide workers, 87 are women and 25 are men. The most common hide products made and sold today are cow and goat hide bags and cow hide bedding pads. On occasion, there is demand for clothing such as a sheepskin hat or goatskin ceremonial skirt.
But hard working alone does not bring in enough money. As Sokatich Ariyo will tell you, I am going to hear you say, "Allaba, go mara penne unse isho yaga nun petle nun se dite isi mana sabi." The hard workers supplement their income in a variety of ways. The women tend their crops, spin cotton, plait hair, and brew a beer-like drink called jaga. They also are responsible for household chores and raising the children. Although the men make additional money by farming and weaving, in general the women carry the brunt of the family's workload. In addition to these daily tasks, the women scrape hides producing items that are used every day in Konzo households. So Kathy explains what she thought of hide working when she was a girl. This is the console hide worker life. They watch and learn from their mothers and other relatives and in turn pass on their skills from generation to generation. Today, most hide workers use iron or glass to scrape hides. However, there are still 17 women and two men who make and use stone tools to scrape hides on a regular basis. The process of manufacturing a stone tool starts with a trip to the quarry. The journey can take as long as two hours each way. There are three types of quarries in Konso. Eroding hill sites with exposed chalcedony, chert or quartz nodules, dried up river beds with deposits of chert, and archaeological sites such as abandoned hideworker homesteads, trash middens and farmer's fields where it is possible to find scrapers and other stone artifacts discarded by previous generations of hide workers. The best times to visit the quarries are during the plowing season when the ground is freshly tilled and right after the rains when soil erosion has exposed buried stones. The amount of stone collected at the quarry depends on at least two factors. The size of the natural stone available at the quarry and how often the hide workers travel there. In the Konzo region, chalcedony and chert occur naturally in larger nodules, up to 9.5 cm in diameter compared to quartz or quartz crystal pieces which average only 2 to 4 cm. Some hide workers only travel to quarries when they need stone, and others go more frequently on their way to markets or when they are visiting relatives or friends. When they have collected enough stones, the hide workers carry them home where they will begin the process of making the stones into scrapers. For most of the hide workers who use chalcedony or chert, the first step in making scrapers is to heat treat the stone. Heating a stone changes its molecular structure, making it easier to break into smaller pieces. To heat treat the stone, the hide workers scrape hair from an animal hide to act as an insulator. They dig a small pit under their hairs. 
First they put the hair in and then they place the stone on top. The stone is covered with cotton seed which provides further insulation. Next the pit is covered with ash. A broken ceramic piece is wedged on top to cover the stone and create further insulation. The stone is left untouched for anywhere between half a day to a month before it is removed and ready for reducing. If the hide worker has obtained a large stone block from the quarry, first you will break it into smaller stones called cores by striking the block with either an iron axe or more rarely a stone hammer. Then the cores are reduced into even smaller pieces called flakes. The hide workers use two main techniques to reduce the cores into flakes. With the direct percussion method, the core is held in the hand and struck by a metal precursor. This differs from the bipolar technique, where the core is placed on a stone anvil and struck against it by the precursor which might be made of metal, stone, or wood. In both methods, some of the flakes that break off the core will be selected for shaping into scrapers. The manufacturing of scrapers from flakes is accomplished by using both the direct percussion method as well as the hammer and anvil technique where the selected flake is placed on a stone and trimmed into a scraper. Sometimes a flake will be selected as a scraper but not retouched as it already has the desired shape. Throughout the tool making process, most of the hide workers are careful to reduce and shape the cores and flakes over a goat skin so as not to litter their household compounds with the sharp stone fragments that could injure themselves or their children. The rejected stone fragments are collected in containers and are discarded at a number of places including the village trash middens, termite mounds, fields or at various locations outside the village walls. After the scrapers are shaped, they are stored in a gourd or other container inside the house until needed. Then a scraper is selected and inserted into the haft of a wooden handle. The scrapers are held into the haft with mastic made from three raisin. To prepare the mastic, first the hide workers collect the raisin from the tree. Some hide workers grind the raisin on a grindstone, heat it, and form it into small pieces. Others add charcoal or ash to the mixture and roll it on a stick. Still, other hide workers just use the raisin pieces as is. In any case, the mastic is inserted in the haft and placed near the hearth to melt. When the mastic has softened, a scraper is inserted into the haft and left for the mastic to harden. So Kati has gone to the market to choose a height for a ceremonial skirt but often a customer will bring a hide to the hide worker to be scraped on demand. The hide workers process between 2 to 10 hides per month. After obtaining a wet or fresh hide, it must be stretched to dry. Tokati so cuts slits in the edges of the hide using a sharp knife. She splits pieces of wood into stakes. 
She places the stakes through the holes in the hide and hammers them into the ground, making sure to keep the hide taut. Hides are stretched to even out their shape and to help keep them from curling or shrinking. There are different techniques for scraping the heights. How heights are scraped by suspending them at an angle with one end tied to the wall and the other end held out on the floor by the height worker's feet. The height workers scrape the inner fatty membrane of the height by pulling the handle towards their bodies. They start at the elevated end and work down to the floor. This method provides maximum leverage, making it easier to work on the tougher cow hides. The thinner goat and sheep hides are scraped in the hand or lap, providing greater control and helping to minimize the chance of a scraper accidentally piercing the hide. This is often done by pushing rather than pulling the scraper. When making certain clothes like sheepskin hats and goatskin skirts, the outer layer of hair is scraped while the inner membrane is not. While working on a hide, the hide workers are constantly resharpening the scraper with an iron billet because it gets dull as they scrape. They will continue resharpening until the scraper is too small to use. It usually takes about one scraper to scrape a sheep or goat hide and two to three scrapers to scrape a cow hide, although this may vary. After the hides are scraped, the next steps are softening and coloring. The consul do not tan their hides, as tanning is a process that uses an agent to chemically alter the hide structure. Instead, they soften and color the hides with a mixture of castor bean oil and ochre. Ochre is a natural reddish pigment composed of iron oxide and clay. Sokati is making a ceremonial skirt which requires softening and coloring. Here she purchases the castor beans at the market, but some hide workers collect it from their household garden. When necessary, she walks to the quarry to collect the ochre. Next, she grinds the castor beans and ochre together and makes an oily paste by placing them in a gourd and mixing them with water. Locati takes the paste and applies it to the hides. She falls, stomps, and sits on the hides for many hours over several days to work in the mixture. <laughs> she then restretches the hide checking for rough spots. If need be, Sokati will rescrape the hide again in selective spots, then reapply the ochre to the freshly scraped areas. Sokati is one of a number of hide workers who bury their cow hides to help soften them. After unearthing the buried hide, Sokati restretches it one last time.
She folds it up where it waits, ready to be sewn. So Kati is one of the only hide workers late who still makes such garments as a ceremonial skirt. She lays out the hides, then measures and cuts them into the appropriate pieces. She makes straight from the unused parts of the hide and sews the pieces together using a metal knife and an awl. Before the 1970s, all of the Konso skirts worn by women were made from hides. They had two different types of skirts. A long skirt, like this one, called a turundiga or nogoda, which was worn at festivals and after a woman gave birth. And a short skirt, called a shola, which was worn for everyday use. When making a sheepskin hat, called a kolola, Sokati takes a freshly skinned hide and pulls the hair off of it. She cuts slits in the hide to hold the stakes, lays it down on a bed of hair to protect it from the ground, and dries and stretches it. When the hide is dried, stretched and scraped, Sokati cuts it into the desired shapes needed for the hat. She cuts straight from the scraps and sews it up. The Kolula hat was worn by women when they became grandmothers. So Kati, a grandmother herself, remembers when she first learned to sew. In console, stone tool hide working is a dying craft. The increase in the availability of inexpensive foreign products like clothing, plastic bags and other manufactured goods has resulted in a drastic decline in the demand for hide clothing, bedding and bags. To compete, hide workers have had to find less expensive and time-consuming ways to produce their goods. Out of the 112 console hide workers, only 19 still use stone tools on a regular basis to scrape their hides. The others use glass or iron tools because these items have become either less expensive or more easily obtainable than stone. For now, however, the art of stone tool hide working is still being passed on to the next generation. Mothers and mothers-in-law, grandmothers, co-wives, sisters, friends, and even a few men continue to teach the craft to their children. Will the tradition continue on? So Kati, for one, hopes so.
Il est raté. Allez, raté, quoi. 